Listen to this. Dateline, Tampa, Florida. When Mrs. Victor D'Alessandro reached into the fruit bin for what she thought was a cantaloupe... Len, there's something we have to talk about. Let me unwind first. Uh, no, I think you better stay wound for this one. I just took Mark to the dentist. Cavities? Uh, worse. Dentures? <laughs> we should be so lucky. Dr. Morrison said Mark is going to have to have braces. That was my next guess. Well, he does have an overbite that could shred lettuce. And then Dr. Morrison sent us across the hall to this orthodontist, and he totally agreed with him. Well, of course he agreed with him. What's he going to do, bite the hand that feeds him? <laughs> Maggie, do you have any idea how much orthodonture costs these days? $5,000? $5,000? <laughs> now, that's the bad news. The good news is we can pay it off in 36 monthly installments. Oh. But then there's some more bad news. Uh, the annual interest rate is 10%, which means we really owe $6,500. Oh, well, sure. If you can't afford something, they charge you more for it. That's the American way. Yeah. Well, the payments are going to be $186 a month for three years. Uh -huh. uh, but the good news is that's the end of the bad news. <laughs> Mark's too young for braces, isn't he? Well, I don't know. I had to have braces when I was his age. It was awful. When I smiled, I looked like the front of a 52 Buick. <laughs> well, that explains it. We've got your side of the family to blame for this. Very funny. Mark is paying for your bad teeth, and I'm supposed to pay for his teeth. I hope it doesn't spread to the other boys. Oh, well, if it does, we'll drown them. <laughs> There's no way we can come up with that kind of money. I mean, we're extended to the hilt. I'm still making payments on the Christmas tree. Well, now, the orthodontist said it had to be done. There are teeth erupting all over his mouth. Now, Len, we're just going to have to work together on this one. We're faced with a financial crisis, so let's see what practical solutions we can come up with. Okay. Let's look at the alternatives. How about if we work with the boy? Help him develop a sort of charisma. Dazzling personality, so people won't even notice his teeth. Hey, what's that smell in the kitchen? Oh, tuna casserole and baking for dinner. <laughs> well, dazzling personality seems iffy. <laughs> Maybe we could get him a job as a circus freak. You know, call him the werewolf of Dayton. <laughs> I don't know why we're worried about his teeth anyway. He never smiles. Well, that could be the reason. His teeth. Oh, Len, he's probably so self-conscious about them, he's afraid to smile. Do you know behind that overbite there could be a charming young boy we've never even met? Nah. <laughs> your birthday, Buffy? Why? <laughs> well, there's a chart here. Which celebrity has your birth sign? Oh, I looked at that. The only celebrity born on my birthday is Dennis Hopper. Hi, everybody. Hi, Maggie. Hi, Maggie. Oh, Loretta, I'm sorry I'm late. Oh, it has no problem, honey. That's one of the advantages of having a select clientele. Oh, well, I may have to cancel my Friday standing appointment and just come in once a month. 
But wait, you would walk around for three weeks looking like that? <laughs> Thanks. Listen, Len and I are faced with a big expense. We're going to need every dollar we can come up with. You mean you're finally doing something about the front of your house? <laughs> it's a little more crucial than that, Buffy. Have you looked at the front of your house? Maggie, are you going to want a manicure today? Oh, now, Chris, you're not listening. Maggie's pinching pennies. <laughs> And I suppose you're going to go to budget hairstyles at the shopping center. Now, don't you believe six ninety-five for a permanent cut? <laughs> they are butchers. Oh, Loretta, <laughs> it's not by choice. Listen, my Friday hair appointment's very important to me. I think of it as a life support system. <laughs> <laughs> now you just lean back and you tell your shrink all about it. Oh well. Mark needs orthodontia, and you can't believe how much it's going to cost. Oh, yes, I can. I went through the same thing with Robin. Mm. And I had just opened the shop, and I had to take a second job at night as a cocktail waitress. Oh. I went to work in a dump called the cave. <laughs> oh, what an experience. Uh. I can imagine. Men leering at you. Oh, yes. Pawing you. Oh, and how? Probably had to fight them off in the parking lot. Every night. Oh, how awful. Actually, it wasn't that bad. <laughs> My seating crystal have perfect teeth. Neither one of them has so much as a cavity. Of course, I do have to take credit for that. When they were teething, I baked my own fluoridated swiba. You know, it'd be a big help if I could get a part-time job. Of course, I'm not really qualified for anything. Let's see, what am I? I'm a wife, a mother, a good housekeeper... All right, scratch that last one. <laughs> well, you went to college. Yeah, but only for two years. And I took liberal arts. All that qualifies you to do is appreciate public television. <laughs> oh, David and I love public television. Sometimes we think Carl Sagan is the only person who talks at our level. <laughs> well, there must be something I can do. And telephone sales or... Addressing envelopes. You see ads for that all the time. Bernie Slater. Huh? Well, she's my Wednesday 3.30 standing. She sells cosmetics door to door, and she does very well. Oh. Hey, I read about this terrific new deodorant called Vanish. When you spray it on, you disappear. And then everyone wonders where the smell is coming from. <laughs> <laughs> Hmm, door-to-door -door sales. Mm -hmm. You think I could do that? Maybe. How good are you at handling rejection? Well, I have a pretty normal response. I become suicidal. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know Bernie Slater, honey. She's got a hide as tough as a rhinoceros. I think it comes from using the cosmetics she sells. <laughs> Well, you know, Rock Hudson started out selling cosmetics door to door, and then he was discovered by Doris Day, who needed a handsome date to make Peter Graves jealous. And or was that a movie they were in? You know, it is really depressing when you realize you're older than Disneyland and your only skill is burping Tupperware. Maggie, when I hear of anyone with a crushing financial burden like yours, I just thank the man upstairs for my real estate license. I know something that you'd be perfect for. Hmm. Penny Dietrich. Huh? Oh, we carpool to parents without partners on Thursday nights. Oh, yeah. Well, Penny works, and she's got this 10-year-old daughter, Tiffany, and she needs a babysitter from 3 to 7. Now, hmm. that is a job that you are qualified for. Yeah. Why don't you talk to her about it? Well, why not? This could be a big opportunity for you, Maggie. Clifton Webb started out as a babysitter. <laughs> Clifton <laughs> Webb? <laughs> getting home tonight. You want to call the boys, tell them dinner will be ready in a few minutes. They couldn't wait. They've already eaten. Oh, what'd they have? Fruit Loops and Gatorade. <laughs> well, that covers your basic food groups. How hungry are you? Very hungry. 
Well, good, because you have a choice of the Hungry Man's Franks and Beans, the Hungry Man's Salisbury Steak, or the Hungry Man's Mexican Combination. How about the Hungry Man's Wife cooking him a meal? Lynn, I'm sorry. I meant to get to the market, but I didn't have time to do that and pick up Tiffany by 3 o'clock. Here, the Mexican combination's good. You like Mexican food. You know, I haven't been able to look at Mexican food since that night we ate at the Casa Mucho Grande. Oh, Lynn, the head waiter explained that. They, they just had a new cook that night, and he was all thumbs. Not all thumbs. One of them was in my chili relleno. That was an olive, and you know it. What little Miss Tiffany Dietrich have for dinner? Well, she wanted stuffed peppers, of all things, so I made those. I love stuffed peppers. They're so thawed. You hate stuffed peppers, and everybody in this family hates them. And that is the marvelous thing about Tiffany. She likes everything I make her, including broccoli. Broccoli's good. Oh, no, you don't. Don't you try to lay a guilt trip on me. A Penny Dietrich is paying me $10 a day. That's 50 big ones a week, which means we can pay off Mark's mouth in 136 weeks, so stop quivering your lower lip at me. You will cook dinner for us on weekends, though, won't you? Oh. Hi, Mom. Bye, Mom. Hey, where are you two going? Over to Aunt Loretta and have ice cream. Has Aunt Loretta invited you for ice cream? No, we beg. <laughs> you beg? Yeah, we do it every night. We have a 7.30 standing. Man does not live by Fruit Loops alone. <laughs> okay, okay. Let's get something settled right now. Now, I know you were all used to having your dinner at 6 o'clock. But Mother is working now, so we have to understand we'll all be eating a little bit later. That girl gets her dinner at 6 o'clock. Go beg for ice cream. <laughs> you know, I'm not asking for gratitude or appreciation. I'm not even asking for understanding. But boy, there is one thing I do demand, and that is respect. Lee Marvin and the Dirty Dozen, right? <laughs> your hat. Ah, oh, come on, Maggie. I appreciate you, and I'm grateful for what you're doing. All I've heard is a lot of grumbling. Well, that's my stomach. <laughs> okay, okay. I'll heat up the Salisbury steak. I have to preheat the oven first. Oh, don't bother. I'll just lick it like a popsicle. <laughs> Look, I know this isn't fair to you guys. You know what I could do? Is I could pick up Tiffany after school and bring her over here, and then we could all have dinner together. And, you know, it wouldn't be bad for Bruce to be exposed to a child who actually eats slima beans instead of stuffing them in his pocket. <laughs> yeah? Yeah, that's an idea. What's wrong with it? I didn't say anything was wrong with it. You said, yeah, yeah, that's an idea. <laughs> it tells me that there's something wrong with it. What is it? Nothing, really. You said, really? Which tells me there's something really wrong with it. Now, let me know, Lynn. Well, if you want to know the truth, Tiffany's behavior profile indicates low-level interaction with peer groups. Will you stop talking in vice principal and just speak English? <laughs> At school, she's a little hellraiser. Oh, I can't believe that. Tiffany's a dream to take care of. She picks up after herself. She does her homework. She even refolds the hand towels in the bathroom. She's a 10-year-old Buffy. All I know is that she's gotten some bad reports from some of her teachers. Oh, so is Mark and so is Bruce. What does that mean? It means there are a couple of little hellraisers. <laughs> if Tiffany's a problem, it's only because she doesn't have any family life. Oh, it'd be good for her to be here. And think how happy it'll make the boys to have a sister. I had a sister, and there weren't any hats in the air at our house. <laughs> You know, Len, I wish you would try to understand that by having Tiffany here, I am solving the problem of the late meals. And by looking after Tiffany, I'm solving the problem of Mark's million-dollar mouth. Now, I have been solving a lot of problems this week, and I hope you appreciate that. 
Not that I'm asking for any appreciation. <laughs> Joan Crawford and Mildred Pierce. <laughs> Mrs. Weston, would you check this over for spelling? Oh, of course, dear. You know, I can't get over how quickly you get your homework done. Well, we just had to write a short composition on somebody very special. Oh. My friend, Mrs. Weston. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Tiffany. Did I spell idolize and worship right? <laughs> oh, <laughs> Tiffany. This is beautiful. But... I'm not anybody special. Can you lie to me? I think it's remarkable how you can take care of a home and a family. And still manage your career as a babysitter. Oh. Well, you make my job easy. You not only pick up after yourself, you pick up after me. Anybody could leave their gardening gloves in the oven. <laughs> what, what's starving? Yeah, what's to eat? Hey, 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 don't touch that chicken. What chicken? <laughs> that chicken. What's wrong with it? It's for our dinner. We're having cold chicken for dinner? <laughs> cold fried chicken's my favorite. <laughs> well, I'm gonna heat it up first. Heat it up, cold fried chicken's even better. <laughs> I'm sure you have a wonderful recipe for it. Yeah, it's a secret blend of 11 herbs and spices. <laughs> Hey, where'd you get this bruise on your arm? Um, I, I hit it on something. You better be more careful. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna be. There's nothing to eat. Well, you can have some prunes. Prunes make me despondent. <laughs> prunes are a natural source of iron. You're a natural source of shut up. Mark! <laughs> Don't you talk to Tiffany that way. And prunes are all you can have until dinner. Forget it. Hey, let's go over and steal Philip Waddy's bike. <laughs> what? Steal his bike? It's our turn. <laughs> you will stay right here and do your homework. Oh, Mom! Tiffany has already finished hers. <laughs> After dinner. Never put off until tonight, which you can do right now. Never put off tonight. <laughs> Tiffany's right, you know. Now go set the table. Go on. Um, hey Bruce, how does your arm feel? Okay. Ow! Oh, how does your arm feel right now? <laughs> Brother, why not you hit him? We're family. <laughs> Come on, let's go see what Aunt Loretta has to do. Your mother said you can't have anything to eat for dinner except prunes. <laughs> <laughs> you tell my mother anything, and I'll break your face. your heart out. Okay. She hits it hard. She hits hard. Now, take a walk. Um, I was just chicken in the pan for you, Mrs. Weston. Oh, you are too good to be true. <laughs> you know who you look like, Mrs. Weston? Who? Jane Fonda. <laughs> I do? <laughs> really? Yeah. I bet I'm not the first one to tell you that. Oh, well, well, no. <laughs> not the first. <laughs> Listen, honey, if you're hungry, you just help yourself to that chicken. Well, maybe just a drumstick. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Uh, what are you looking for? 
My golf clubs. Oh, they're in the kitchen. Tiffany polished them for you. She what? And she washed your golf bag. What'd she do that for? She wanted to. She's like that. You know, she even helped me with dinner last night. <clears throat> um, Lynn, do I remind you of some particular person? <laughs> huh? You know, a movie star, a celebrity, somebody like that? <laughs> yeah, now that you mention it, you do remind me of uh, Jane Meadows. Jane Meadows? <laughs> it's Cleopatra. <laughs> Gee, maybe I was wrong about Tiffany. But she's not going to be here every Saturday, is she? No, it's just an emergency. Penny at a Parents Without Partners barbecue. <laughs> There's uh, something about Tiffany that still bothers you, though, isn't there? It's just that the, the boys seem to resent her so much. Well, why wouldn't they? She's neat. She does her homework on time. She's polite. Helps me around the house. It's such a nice surprise to walk into the bathroom and find the toilet seat down. <laughs> Yeah, but I still think that she's pushing things when she wants to play baseball with the boys. She likes baseball. And lots of girls play Little League now, you know. That still doesn't make it right. Girls ought to stick to the sports that they're suited for, like volleyball and archery and mud wrestling. <laughs> you know something? You're a male chauvinist. <laughs> Margaret. <laughs> I'm going to save you the embarrassment of being called on a redundancy by a stranger. Let me explain something. The term chauvinist comes from the name Chauvin, Nicholas Chauvin, a French soldier during the Napoleonic Wars whose undying loyalty and blind patriotism was legend. Hence, an unreasoning patriot is called a chauvinist. It would be redundant to say male chauvinist because Chauvin was a male soldier, and soldiering like baseball ought to be left to us guys. You know, Len, there's a lot of the jerk in you. What's the matter? Say, say, it's Mark. What are you talking about? It's Mark. What about him? Uh, Tiffany hit him in the mouth. Oh, I'm sure Tiffany did no Honest, such... Mom, she hit him right in the mouth with a baseball bat. A baseball bat? Oh. <gasps> what happened to you? Tiffany hit me in the mouth with a baseball bat. <gasps> you threw out my head. He tried to dust me off. <laughs> it was a wild pit. On it. <laughs> you dirty liar. I'm going to knock out the rest of your teeth. Oh, no. <laughs> Remember the bad seed? <laughs> yeah. Whatever happened to Patty McCormick? In the movie, she was electrocuted. <laughs> In real life, the last time I saw her was on the Ropers. Life has a way of imitating art, doesn't it? Well, I hate to admit it, but that Tiffany sure had me fooled. Yeah, me too. I said girls couldn't play baseball. She got a hit her first time at bat. That is really sick. You think it's funny that she attacked our son and knocked out four of his teeth? No. But you have to admit, she saved us a bundle on braces. <laughs> Mark's bridge is only going to cost $450. And didn't Penny Dietrich say she'd pay for half of that? Yeah. She was going to pay for all of it until Mark admitted he was trying to dust her off. He could never tell the truth at home. Why does he do it in front of strangers? <laughs> See you later. Got a baseball game? No. Nah, just going over to Tiffany's. Tiffany's? Yeah. You know... Say the pretty good baseball player. You just got to be careful where you pitch her. <laughs> He's going to Tiffany's. Does that make any sense to you? Sure. It's the old mule story. Tiffany and Mark were destined for each other. She just had to get his attention first. 